It's the Score North Twin Show. Yeah, if you're waiting for the hot stove sounder, sorry. Yeah. Joe Polad killed our buzz a couple days ago. Hey, they can still Joe. do something. It's just not going to be Snell <laughs> or any other big yeah, name. Yeah, Michael Lorenzen. Michael Here Lorenzen's go, right, you know? right, might, might be right around the corner. four and a half ERA. That's, uh, Michael A. I, Taylor, perfect. Adam Duvall. Come on, they'll, they'll right. still do something. We promised Declan in a text thread that we wouldn't lead the show with an economical free agent pitcher option. So I will not lead the show with it. Please but there me. is an economical high-end pitcher option coming. out there that we got savaged for bringing up a few months ago. I knew you were going to bring this up. And I, I, won't, and I won't even say his name, but I'm interested to see if that All right. pops up again. <laughs> I saw a couple dark places on Twitter, people wondering. Uh, oh, there's a former like best pitcher like in baseball web? that is dark wanted, Twitter, begging like to play for web? a... He's begging to pitch for like a million dollars right now just to prove that he still can't. All right. I'm not even going to say who it is in case the algorithm is listening. Jack Morris really, deserves his chance. That's all I got to say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look how uncomfortable Declan is. I'm so uncomfortable. So uncomfortable. Uh, well, we have a random twin of the week. <laughs> all right. We will we will follow up on the payroll discussion from yesterday, oh, God. which was triggering as it as it usually is. People people just clowning me in the YouTube comment section. That's fine. I can take it. But Declan has five under-the-radar players to watch at spring training here with the first game. They play the Gophers tomorrow night, I believe, Mm -hmm. and then the Grapefruit League schedule picks up. So, yeah, let's turn over to Dex. Who are the five players under the radar? And how are we defining under the radar, by the way? So uh, under the radar being guys that are long shots to make this roster, and also Brooks Lee does not classify as under the radar. Just a a big spoiler out of the gate there. He's a top prospect he could we could actually have a conversation i think on another podcast of what it looks like if he actually does make this team out of spring training which i'm curious to see and i think he's got a chance oh yeah we should do that on like monday we'll see what happens we we can talk about some of the games but we should i'm going to earmark that one and that could actually mark it yeah and that could actually set up a trade to get you a pitcher who would probably make make you happier than michael lorenzen so look at you on a reckless speculation thursday right now Ah, i embrace the day hey you do would you trade uh, if if Brooks Lee is just like, I mean it's spring training so it's tough to. You, Luke Hughes lit it up in spring training one year, right? Sure. You got to be careful. But would you trade Edward Julian for a high end number two starting? Pitcher it's a reckless speculation Thursday, Thursday right but in. I need an episode to talk about that. Like I can't just I be like, weekend, yes, right? I would. I need a weekend, a few so, cocktails. Yeah, I need I need I need some I need a lot of thoughts. I want to hear I, Declan. I, I give you my answer. Okay. Uh, so yeah, five guys. Two of them we've talked a good amount about even in this off season, three of them, we really haven't mentioned at all. So we'll kind of work our way up. We'll start with the two guys that probably have a better shot of anyone to make this roster, but are still under the radar to a degree. Actually, let me, uh, where, where's our, where's our music for? Oh, the major for, league, uh, the major, major league. league. This one drops. It's great, man. It's like the spring there. I think it's when they're reporting to spring training, right? But you, but you, yep. Yep. I think if you type in Major League in Zeta, you should be able to should be able to get it to find it. Yeah, yeah. somebody put the video out of like this is the like yesterday Reporting. was like the anniversary of when the, the 1989 three, Cleveland Indians yes. reported. I saw that and again, <laughs> yes, that was awesome. Jake Taylor showing up limping yep. with both legs. That's who it was. Willie Mays Hayes didn't Willie Mays Hayes? He woke up. He was in like his pajamas and he jumped mm-hmm. off of a mattress yeah. and he won the the sprinting yep. thing yeah. in the outfield. Yeah, with no shoes or something, right? <laughs> yeah. There it is. There we go. Okay. There it is. Okay, let's start with this one. So let's start with the name we do know and, and probably actually could make this roster out of spring training. We're going to start with Trevor Larnick. And I'm going to start with under the radar because he is still log jammed here. He has to really show something to make the major league roster out of spring training. He was the uh, 20th overall pick in the draft. He's had 600 at-bats in his major league career. I know you could probably say, how can you call someone under the radar with already 600 major league at-bats? But this dude has to prove it now. I mean, he was in a draft that had a, that was a first-round pick. He's actually hit decently at target field. He hit well at target field last year. He was abysmal on the road. But he bats left. He's got to figure out a way to also hit lefties a little bit more. He's an athletic player. And when you just look at the guys that were drafted in the 2018 draft, uh, what you had Nico uh, Horner from the Cubs. He's been a stud for the Cubs uh, so stud. far. Stud. Uh, Shane McClanahan with the Rays was in that draft. Logan Gilbert was in that draft. There were some really good pitchers in that draft. Uh, But Trevor Larnick was the 20th overall pick. And 
got to kind of figure it out now. And if he can force someone's hand here, like maybe if Matt Walner, like we talked about and write that down, struggles a little bit, is there a chance that Trevor Larnick makes this roster out of spring training? I love this name here because he falls into the category and there's all sorts of examples even throughout like the last 20 years of Twins history of a guy that crushed it in the minors was maybe like he was a first round draft pick. So a guy that was from high school or college was highly touted mashes in the double A triple A levels of the minors and then gets to the major leagues and either injuries or just kind of a slow start in your first five or 600 plate appearances. It doesn't mean he's cooked. It doesn't mean he's cooked. Sometimes guys need like five or 600 plate appearances. I think Tom Kelly once said a thousand to 1500 plate appearances and you are sort of who you are, right? Yep. And he is still a full season away from landing between a thousand and 1500 plate appearances, but because he's 27 years old, I think, and because he's had two or three stop starts, this yeah. is kind of, it's kind of go time for him. I think he has yeah. one minor league year option left. But a lot of fans, I feel like, have just kind of written him off because ah, he hasn't really exploded yet. But really interesting dude to keep an eye on and could be one of your best hitters. He has been every level, like college, yep. high levels of minor leagues. He has figured out a way to mash. So if he dials it in, he could be one of your sneaky best hitters. But he could also just be a flamed out prospect. There's a wide yeah. variance of what could happen with it. Underrated trade chip. Underrated trade chip. Puts together a decent spring, but the numbers don't come out in his favor. I think if you are looking at guys who are potentially moved, he is one of my top three. And perception matters too, because he's probably more valuable as a trade chip if he's ma if he's mashing and there's nowhere to put him. If he Correct. if he goes to St. Paul and he's hitting 370 with an 1100 OPS and it's six six weeks in, it's like I don't know. Walner's playing well. Right. Kepler's playing well. He might be more valuable exploding in the minors for the first month than yeah. kind of toil toiling in the majors, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Right. Uh, another position player on this list, another guy we've mentioned, kind of should be able to maybe make a case to make the roster here, but Austin Martin, who they got in the Jose Barrios trade. So a guy who's been an on-base machine in the minors, okay? He's really good eye at the plate. I've watched him a handful of times at St. Paul. Really good eye. Not a lot of pop, man. A career slugging percentage in the minor leagues of 361. Now he gets on base a ton. That's great. Get on base. What do you love about him? He gets on base, but you also want to see if this guy can actually hit a little bit more for power. Yep. I'm curious if that will ever be the case. He might just have a really good eye at the plate and can't develop uh, into a to a major league hitter every single day. But he's athletic enough. He was the fifth overall pick in the 2020 draft. He's also in kind of the Larnick territory where he's going to turn 25, so he's a little younger uh, next month. He can probably start the season in AAA, but if he has a big spring, then also what do you do? How does that kind of play into their cards? Because he can play short, he can play center, he can play second. He's a very athletic and versatile glove, so I wonder what he can do to force the hand here at spring training. Two things here. One, I, I think if he has a good spring dex, as you just talked about there, I think he makes the team because of, of the fact that he can play center. He can play the in, infield. He is inherently more valuable as a utility guy than Larnick, who is more of just a corner outfield guy. But here's my question, okay? So this franchise acquired him as a key component of the Brios trade. They then a couple of years ago tried to alter his swing to generate more power. It was a colossal flop. It sounds like he tried, too, and it was a flop. So he went back, it sounds like, to his mechanics in 2023, and, and he doesn't generate a ton of power, but he is a solid player. My question is this. Does that catch up to him with the organization, or is that now not a problem, to which I do not know? Well, I would say at this point, 25 years old, he's not going to be a power hitter. Agreed. So what is the what is the requisite amount of power you need to be Correct. a major league hitter, right? That's you, what I'm saying. Exactly. You, you got to be able to hit a ball over an outfielder's head once in a while, I think, to be a starting, you know, 140 games a year guy. You, 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 but here's the thing, too. He gets on base at close to a 400 clip in the minor leagues, and that is a super valuable trait too. So if, Sorry. like, if he could play center field, 
and he maybe mixes around like, but like if center field, if he can play above average defense in center field as Mm -hmm. part of his repertoire and maybe play some second base corner outfield spots. So kind of a super utility guy who can play center field Mm -hmm. and he can get on base at a, at in the major league, let's say it goes from like 390 on base to maybe 350 or 360. He would be one of their best on base guys. So like last year, the twins as a team, they ranked 12th in on base percentage, largely because of Edward Julian and uh, Royce Lewis, too, when he came in the second half of the season. They don't have a ton of on-base machines, so they, they could use his skill set. But And I would, I'd love to ask, maybe we can at some point um, get an answer on this down in Fort Myers, but go ask a major league coach or, or a Rocco or a Derek Falvey or somebody, like, what is the line for power if you can't hit a double once in a while? He doesn't need to hit 20 home runs, but if he can't hit a few home runs right. and, and hit a ball to the wall once in a while... It's tough to be an everyday major league player. So, yep. Let's see. And and in Julian's case, he had he has pop. Yes, absolutely. So like well, he can pop, he yeah. can drive a ball big time. Exactly. Yeah. So is the difference that that this guy can't drive a ball consistently enough that he's not seen as a future asset? He's a guy that could play for sure. But anyway, I'm just curious because they definitely tried to change a swing and tried very hard, and it just totally flopped. So, Phil, I, I defer to you on that. I think by his age, I don't think that you can now go back and try well, it again. Well, there were some guys in baseball history that, you know, didn't have any power oh, until they were true. like 25, 26, and they found some secret sauce. All I don't I think know that happened Brady anymore. Anderson <laughs> naturally became one of the great power <laughs> sluggers of, of our time in the 90s, and then it just disappeared. Something else to watch, kind of the same thing I was saying about Larnick, too, which is, these prospects, they go level to level in the minor leagues and they climb the charts and they mash and then the major leagues are a totally different game and they stumble and it might take them two or three stops and starts. Austin Martin, not that long ago, 2022, Baseball America, top 50 prospect. 2021, yeah. top 20, like all of baseball. Mm-hmm. And Trevor Larnick, same thing. He was a top 40 prospect in 2021. That's not that long ago, man. That's like two or, two or three years Correct. ago. These guys were among the top 50 minor league players and prospects in the entire ecosystem of pro baseball. So just we'll see. We'll see what happens. All right, there one we. more position player here. I have two other pitchers on this list, so three guys left. Uh, one more position player, a guy we have not really talked about at all. Royce, I think, mentioned him in passing last week when talking about all the catchers. Jair Camargo. Oh, he's on the 40. Yeah. He is on the 40, man. He actually, the Twins got him from the Gratterall trade. He was included with Kenta Maeda from the Dodgers, and now this guy has kind of quietly risen in the minor leagues. Uh, he would play just rookie ball at the Dodgers, and with the Twins, this dude is kind of the opposite of Austin Martin. Absurd power, and at yeah. a catcher position. Like a ridiculous amount of power. He had 21 home runs last year, a 500 slugging percentage, but 119 strikeouts in 90 games, just 29 walks. So boom or bust. I don't know how well this guy is defensively either. He is a catcher. I don't know if maybe that's his position going forward. If he's a good defensive catcher, we'll see. Uh, last year, he threw out 25% of stolen base of would-be stolen base uh, attempts, which is somewhat of an encouraging sign, I guess. But he was a free swinger, and catching catcher injuries happen. And also, let's just let's go down more reckless speculation here in spring training. Let's oh, say oh. reckless speculation. I know where you're going. Let's say Camargo has a hell of a spring. Christian Vazquez has lost some weight, and he's also looking like he's going to be a healthy guy. If some other team loses their catcher in spring training, do you flip Vazquez and make Camargo your backup catcher to Ryan Jeffers in your opening day roster? Just throwing it out there. I think like the $10 million price right now on Vazquez is what's tough because you'd have to probably eat some of that money, if not a lot of that money. Because I don't don't think he's, based on the season he had last year, I don't think a team is, it would have to be an injury or a desperate team that, Maybe even a team that thinks they can contend and they just need a professional dude back there because they don't love their backups. But yeah, someone to watch for sure. The power numbers are ridiculous. You know, 21 home runs and 368 plate appearances last year. But yeah, he's going to like, I think if you just translate his numbers to the majors, probably a guy that struggles to get on base at a 300 clip, but can run into, you know, 25 pitches a year and put him over the fence. Yeah. And he's not 23, 24 years old. Yeah, he's still 23. I mean, and honestly, a lot of catchers these days are going to get either defensive prowess with no bat or minimal defensive impact with a big bat. You know, I feel he's like he's Colombian, like... by the way. Colombian. Oh, interesting. Uh, I mean, Colombian players, the Twins. Uh, 
not to not to rain on the catching parade though, but I think one of the things I'm most curious about this season is how Jeffers responds. Like I'm, I, I still think that that's uh, You're skeptical. No, well, I no, you know, I'm, I'm not skeptical because of something he did wrong. I just think that position and the toll it takes is so great that I'm skeptical about, like if in Julian's case, right? Second baseman probably improved, but the position doesn't like scare me about w- wearing him down. Year to year with catchers until they, they've had a fairly large runway sample size. I just, I, I'm cautious. Yep, I'm cautious because I can't assume, I don't want to assume that Jeffers is going to come back offensively with, with the exact same year because the demands of what he's being asked to do behind the plate are also great. Yeah, I think one thing, I'd be a little more nervous about it if it wasn't talked about before the season. Like, it wasn't like, oh, Jeffers broke out. Why did it happen? I don't don't know. Like, he literally, before the season, talked about wholesale swing changes, driving the ball more, mechanical changes. Yep. So Now, I could argue the other side and say his batting average on balls in play last year was 100 points higher than it was in 2022, which... That could signal a lot of batted ball luck. That's that maybe there's some batted ball noise in there somewhere. Um, but he also, I don't know, like he also, if you look at, let's say, like his hard hit rate here, his hard hit rate was up a little bit. There's probably some luck and some noise in there. Sure. And some, and some and bullpen saying, regression. And, and I'm saying wear and tear as well, though. Yeah, for sure. Because that position is just so brutal. By the way, there have been, so there haven't been very many Colombian players. According to baseball reference, there's only been like, 45 Colombian born players play major league baseball. A couple very prominent former twins. Orlando Cabrera. Okay. Colombian. Well, Third yeah. most wins above replacement well. in Colombian born history. Edgar Renteria, Jose Quintana, mm-hmm. Julio Tehran, Gio Urshela, another Colombian born really? player. Happy fella. Yeah. He's a happy fella. How the Yankees take he's a free a agent right now. To yeah, he's still out there. Could bring still him back right now there. if you wanted. Geo with his walk up song. Can he pitch? With his walk up song. Donnie Barrels. Donnie Barrels is Colombian born too. Uh, His walk up song was brutal. Um, I'm not going to get the specifics. I loved it. Two more guys. Two more guys here. They're both arms. Need the music. Need the music. There we go. We need, I need to, I want our shell's walk up song. I need to loop the other part of this just to like, all our other beds so I don't have to keep hitting this every third minute. Um, All right. Two more pitchers on this list here. Let's start with Matt Catarino. So They're Matt Canarino was a second round pick and yep. put up really impressive numbers. But the problem was he only had, let's see here in the minor leagues, just 25 starts, and, uh, 85 innings before he had Tommy John in 2022, wiped out all of 2023. But this dude is now 26 years old. He's healthy. He has a lot of eyes on him at spring training because of the age. I'm going to guess if he has a pretty strong spring, he'll probably actually start in St. Paul. We'll see where they want to slide him in there, but ridiculous strikeout stuff was a really good college pitcher at Rice University. Um, yeah, this a second round pick in 2019, but of his age and of his rehab here, I'm curious to see where he starts, but we could see him in a Minnesota Twins uniform at some point this season due to injuries or ineffectiveness in the rotation, but another guy to watch, I think, uh, as spring training wraps up here. Yeah, he... so. He's had injury stuff, and then the, he was one of the victims of the pandemic wiping out the minor league season in 2020. But they've liked him for a number of years as a guy that could be a staple in the rotation. And I wonder, too, I, I get it. Like, cheap poll ads is the number one reason why they haven't signed a pitcher. But they got a couple interesting arms like him that, in a perfect world, you'd make some room and, like, this dude rises up and gives you some starter innings for the first yep. time. Yep. You know, it's, he's he's second round pick. And I think he, so he went to rice and I'm pretty sure rice has been kind of a factory for good baseball program. pitchers in the past. Yep. I think Tyler so, Duffy was a rice guy. He was, there you go. The Tyler yeah. Duffy, uh, Houston area. Yep. Yeah. T- Tyler Duffy making rice a pitching factory. Yeah. Yeah. If, I was thinking twins. I was thinking like tw- their twins connections, not like yeah. the... I got it, Declan. Phil just took yeah, an yeah, unnecessary yeah, shot. Yeah, I totally yeah. got Tyler what Duffy, you were yeah. saying. You're Tyler Duffy had a couple good years as a reliever. You're coming here with the knowledge, and you were just mocked. Yeah, I, I, I think a simple wrong would have done just um, fine. No, you're not wrong. Okay. I'm not wrong. Uh, so the F- Athletic did a Canarino story a couple of days ago, and they actually mm-hmm. dropped in uh, some of his strikeouts from his time a couple of years ago 
with Wichita, and then a bullpen he is do doing now. And if I may uh, football geek out here for a second <laughs> with some X's and O's of baseball. Please do. Canarino at Wichita, I'm not surprised he, he had arm problems. He had a nasty hitch. So if you go back and watch, he, he has a definite hitch in his d delivery. It's a sort of violent stop start, which I didn't like. And I noticed in the bullpen that was then um, on, tagged to the same story from this spring, it looks like the hitch is gone and it's far more smooth. Man, he was, his minor league numbers are ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Bonkers, man. So he has, let's see here. He's only made 26 starts in the minor leagues. He has a 1.48 ERA and 14 strikeouts there. per nine as a starting pitcher. Dude. His yeah. stuff is just filthy. It's electric. Okay, Rice University Pitching Factory. Norm Charlton back Norm in the Charlton, day went to Rice. Yeah. Jeff Neiman, remember that big, like, six-foot-10 oh, yeah. Rays pitcher, Jeff, Jeff Neiman? Neiman? Norm yep. Charlton, I remember well, yeah. And then a number of different Twins connections. Tyler Duffy, Phil Umber, JT Shagwa. Okay, oh. so far, All so far, we Rice. aren't talking pitching factory, but we are talking guys that went to Rice. David Ardsma, Matt oh, yeah. Anderson, remember that guy? That's a great one. That's pretty much it. That's pretty much the list. So really, we have shot down the fact it was a pitching f factory, factory, and they just have sent a bunch of guys <laughs> to the major Berkman. leagues who had varying degrees oh, of success. Okay. Lance Berkman went to Rice. Did he really? Okay. Yeah, Lance Berkman, dude. Jose Cruz, Jose Cruz Jr. went to Rice. Pretty good. Anthony Rendon loves baseball. He went to Rice too. Jose Cruz Jr. I always Bubba, felt... Bubba Crosby. Remember him? Oh yeah. I, I always felt Cruz Jr. was good, but fl if if I recall correctly, he flamed out pretty quickly, didn't he? He yeah. He burst on the scene. Like, he, he was really part good. of that Seattle team with I think yeah. Griffey and A Rod, and he I was his kind old of man. That. His old man was a great player for the Astros. Senior. He Long did hit time. 200 career home runs in the big leagues. Okay. We should just do like a we should do a baseball reference rabbit hole segment here once a week Love where that. we just devote 20 minutes to like wherever you wind up clicking through. That's where uh, the conversation goes. Uh Talking Baseball does that where you have to get to a player's homepage. They'll start on a random teammates and you have to figure <laughs> out how to get there with as as a least amount of clicks as possible. It's great. It's it's that's phenomenal. Awesome. Oh man. Yeah. That's that's amazing. We should we should steal that. Just straight up steal that. Web AJ, help us out with that one. Mm -hmm. um, all right, last guy on this list, another pitcher. I actually saw this guy pitch at St. Paul last year towards the end of the season. David Festa, big right hander, six foot six, yeah. a buck eighty five, uh, was the thirteenth round pick by the Twins in two thousand twenty one. Showed really promising stuff in the uh, lower ranks and A ball and A, a plus ball. But in double A, got hit a little bit, which happens. He was also 23 years old pitching in double A. Uh, made just three starts last year with St. Paul. Really good strikeout stuff, but also a control issue. Um, walks a ton of guys. We'll have to figure that out. Again, I could see this guy maybe making a spot start or a spot uh, or a start in rotation due to injuries or an effectiveness at some point during the twin season. But a fun guy to watch. In fact, I would say, hell, if, if you're in the area and you want to go to watch a St. Paul Saints game, and if we'll see what the roster stand out, Watching Canarito to David Festa back to back oh, days. Let's go. That'd be, that'd be fun to see. Uh, so, David Festa, one more guy to watch here under the radar names at spring training. Love it, dude. It's a great list. What, Some fun guys to watch. What is the expectation for one Simeon Woods Richardson? Yeah, he's another one that, like, I'm pretty sure he popped up on, like, Baseball America top 100 lists. Oh, he did. He was pretty highly touted, too. But yeah, I would say, I would say Cantorino is my personal favorite on this list in terms of yeah. the highest upside, like a dude that could come in and just be a smoke thrower in your rotation. So we'll see. Yeah. Simeon Rose, he's gotten some bullpen run too. It kind of, kind of remains to be seen if he's going to be a yeah. reliever long-term. It, it feels like the uh, Barrios trade, like the twins at the time did really well there. And we're, but we sort of got stuck there. M Martin. Yeah. On paper. Might, yeah, might be a nice player, but he's definitely not the player we expected. And same for because Woods Richardson has made what a couple of appearances. The, so his Twins? yeah, he by the way he did. Uh, I mean, he was in St. Paul for twenty four starts last year and just mm -hmm. like had control issues. He's mm -hmm. he's not the biggest strikeout guy as he's gone up the ladder too. The strikeout numbers yeah. have kind of dissipated. So All right. I don't know. Like if you can't conquer AAA as a starter, but he's also only 23. I think if he was 25 or 26, I'd be a little bit more nervous. 
So they probably start him at triple A, not probably, like he'll start at triple A. And then if he can kind of figure it out in the second full year at St. Paul, then I wouldn't write him off. Good job, guys. Nice work, Declan. Bravo. Bye, guys. Hey, Bye guys before so before we get to a random twin of the week, just any follow up thoughts from our uh, our payroll discussion, which is just mostly savaging me in the YouTube comment sections and on Twitter for being a Polad pocket protector. Um, my f- thought is still this: I understand why people are upset, and I don't feel the Twins are presenting this entire situation from a PR standpoint nearly as wise as they should be. And I don't think it's fair. I don't think it's fair within, you know, a spring training is starting to say, you know, that TV deal that was going to have streaming that's out. You know, that hope that, that you had about uh, Blake Snell, that's out. I understand some of these things, but I also, I also feel for a fan base that I think was like chopping at the bit for excitement. Yeah. And they basically were just, it was just put out there and yanked. So, um, I think we can probably talk about these things individually and understand them or at least try and explain them. But I'm also not going to be upset at people who, who are like baseball season starting and you're basically, you're telling me nothing but bad news. Yeah. And I, I don't know, like, I don't, I don't think my stance is controversial. They do need another pitcher. Yeah. And I think they hope that it's somebody from within. They hope that it's a Varland or a Cantorino. I think if they don't make a move for a pitcher via trade before the season starts, I think they will before the trade deadline. So I'm not like as worked up about this as other people. And also the way that I have watched and viewed the twins ever since they moved into the new ballpark in target field was great. Like target field helped them go from bottom three and bottom five in payroll to being something more competitive, but something has been lost in translation. Shocking. <laughs> Like it's, it's happened with multiple it generations of put, right? Exactly. Where people thought they were promised the twins are now going to spend with the Yankees because they got a new ballpark. The twins are always going to be based on baseball's economic system and based on every owner being a billionaire that wants to make a profit off of their business. They're always going to be between like 13th and 19th in payroll. If they go below that, hammer them. If they go above that, wow, that's amazing. You're probably taking a loss on your product. Thank you. So I guess I've, I feel like by not getting worked up over the payroll thing, I'm I'm being painted as like a pole ad pocket protector. But naturally, I guess well maybe I am. I don't know. I think the pole ad thing is this too. I think it's as simple as it's like a marriage, and you were asked to pick up something on the the way home tonight, and you forgot. Honest mistake. Not that big a deal, right? Like okay, you're not going to go sign Snell. Do I love how you talked about it? No, but okay, you know, like he's going to make a ton. You don't want to pay that. But then you get home and you tell the wife, I'm sorry, I forgot to get the, uh, I forgot to pick up the chicken from Quick Trip. And she says to you, you son of a, and now all of those things start to pour out, right? You promised me a streaming TV deal and you didn't give me that. And now you're not going to spend. It's built up, pent up. It's, it's not, yes. th- it's not this thing. It's the whole, it's, it's, it's the whole thing. Okay. And, and, you know, the last time people saw the twins was in the playoffs and I think there was genuine excitement, which was awesome. Yeah. So I, so I get, I get where there is a frustration. Of I do now too. You're killing my mojo. I do too. Yeah. It's, it's like, you know, you want to keep the party going, but someone turned on the lights and said, Hey, you got like the part we, sorry, we said the party was going to go till 4am. It actually has to stop at two, but there'll right. be another, like, we think there's going to be another party. It's going to be great. <laughs> right. So they've got, I think it's going to get real ugly if they get off to a bad start. And I don't think they're in a position roster wise to get off to a bad start unless bad luck. Cause they've got a number one starter. They've got studs all across the lineup, but if they were to start slow and all of a sudden now they're like, you know, they're uh, 11 and 18 or something. Yeah. And the wheels have kind of come off. It's going to be, well, there it is. This is what you get for not, this is what you get for going cheap with your rotation. Right. So getting off to a hot start would buy them some good graces again. I also don't like the fact that um, what you have done too is you've given people a preseason excuse to, to tune out and not buy tickets. Like you do want to sell tickets, yeah. And and so now you've you've sort of presented them with a oh okay, guess I'll spend it elsewhere. And that's the thing too. Like this market is very delicate because it's really not th- that big, and we have every major sport 
a major college, which in, in, you know, basketball has trouble drawing already. And the Timberwolves are really good, which is awesome. But you're going to have people and companies now saying, well, I guess I'll spend on that product instead. So like, you got to be careful. Yeah, it's, oh, it's, it's, it's just kind of a bad, the whole thing is a bad look. It's a bad look. I understand it, but it's a bad look. And I don't expect fans to be, if I you, don't expect fans to link arms and say, yes, let's side with the billionaires. Right. Let's save as much well, money as possible. I get it. The decision not to find, and, and I get, I get it. You went back to Bally's. They're going to, they're going to write you a check. It's not as much as it was, but it's still a known, a known amount. Right. But if they were to, but if the poll ads were to ask me, what should we do here? I would actually say, I wouldn't get on a mountaintop and say, screw Blake Snell, but I would seriously have considered taking a loss on TV. And taking a loss in 2024 is what you're saying. Yes. Yes. What I'm saying is I would have seriously considered saying, I know that you're passing up like a certain amount here, but if we can get you streaming as soon as possible, I think that the short term hurt there is worth yeah. the long term gain. So you there. could then then you could come out and say, "Hey, we are going to kind of we're going to eat this. We're not going to get the check up front. We're going to build we're going to But the but then the question is like, okay, what is their streaming partnership? Do they have a I, I think baseball is willing to step build in. Build their own. Do they Well, do, I think uh, baseball will help mlb.com like it's Yes. Yes. But then it's how very many, tough. But then how many people are going to have to find mlb.com or the MLB app like well, to you explain can, that to people? It's I, I think what baseball's done is you can cut deals with cable and satellite operators to give yourself a channel for your games. Like it's a pain, but the Padres are doing it. The Rockies are doing it. Like there are teams that, that are very much in the, in progress of doing this. And I'm not saying it's simple, but I'm just saying I, I personally understand the payroll thing and not going out and signing guys way more than the TV thing. Cause I think that just, that's just uh to me, that's a foundational alienation of your fan base. Yeah. Well, we can, there's more to be discussed here, I'm sure. And we'll, we'll probably jump back into this as we start to project. What that is their TV situation besides 2000? Foundational a- alienation. I got to write that down. Put it on a t-shirt. Foundational <laughs> alienation. We got to get familiar. to a random twin of the week here. Cause we only have a few more minutes left All before right. Thursday recording okay. on purple Let's daily go. today. So the random twin of the week, Declan will lead this one. Losers out every week. And uh, Declan fell victim to Judd guessing Joe Creedy correctly. No. Last yeah, but no. Declan struck out. Oh, that's right. I Declan struck, struck out. out. That's right. Yeah, let's not give me credit where I don't I, deserve it. It's true. It still, I'm, I'm still upset. Probably the most upset I've been on the random twin of the week. Either. Yeah, Dex went aggressive and um, he was sniffing you, around. Dude. Kurt Suzuki, you idiot. All right. So we're going to throw out a series of clues. Judd and I get up to three incorrect guesses each. We can shot them out whenever we want. If one of us hits a third strike, the other person wins just like last week. Dex has 11 wins. Judd has 10. I have eight. I haven't had one in like four months. So I'm on a really bad losing really? streak. Yeah, it's bad. Oh, boy. Okay. I was dominating you guys early in this and I just. Yeah, you were. I'm, I'm in a I'm in a slump right now. Okay. So here we go. Here we go. No Google. All right. This random twin of the week was drafted three times. Three times in the 50th round, 50th round, and then third round. Okay. Oh, so we had a great, like, junior year in college. Yeah, at uh, Central Florida. No, that was his high, no, that was his high school. Uh, South Carolina for college. South Carolina for college. Central Florida for high school. Okay. I'll give you some names. In that third round. So he was drafted in the third round, by the way, of that draft. Mm-hmm. And I'll give you some names from that round. Andrew Miller. Sean Markham. Sean Rodriguez. Drew Stubbs. Ooh. Matt Harrison. Ryan Garko. Remember Ryan Garko? Catch Ryan Garko, dude. Mm-hmm. Loved, I love Drew Stubbs. He, uh, all those guys were drafted in the third round of this random twin of the week. Random twin of the week played in 164 big league games. That's not very many. All with the twins. Is it? Oh, my God. 
Let's do it. Let's hear it. Oh my it. god. Let's hear it. Does he want to do it? Let's hear it. That's not a lot of clues. This would be very impressive. Yeah, it would be. It, this would end your four month. Is it Brian skin. Busher? Yeah, let's go, dude. Oh my god. Oh my oh god. My I bowed out. I'm back, dude. I oh am my back. god. Dude. Brian Busher, let's go. Oh, oh man. Okay. I oh. banked. I I will say this. I banked Declan's clue from yesterday. I yep. I, De I meant to Declan, give you guys that again. So Declan said, I don't remember what it was, but That's right. well, actually here. So Hawks whatever nice, you yeah, whatever, whatever you said yesterday, I wrote down a name on my piece of paper, and it wound up not being that name. But you said something like similar to Joe Creedy or something along the same lines yep. as Joe Creedy. So I was thinking. So I thought I was maybe gonna rifle off Mike Lamb. Because he was the third baseman they tried the year before Joe Creedy. Yep. Mm -hmm. But the other mm -hmm. guy that was in the mix playing third base in those years was Brian Busher. Yeah. Brian Busher. Uh, South Carolina. Dude, Apparently on a Facebook status, February of 2009, February 16th, um, my buddy said, I want Joe Creedy. And I said, no way, man, because Harris and Busher are G's in the making. <laughs> that is my exact comment back to him <laughs> on that. Uh, I also found a couple funny tweets from Phil Mackey on Brian Busher in 2009. I was, dude, I was all about Brian Busher. Um, oh. I actually think Busher can be a decent major league hitter, but he just doesn't fit the roster. Do you? I was going to give this as a clue. Do you guys remember the June that Brian Busher put up in 2008 with the Twins? <laughs> Enough to get me excited. That's all I remember. No. In 14 <laughs> games, he hit 360, had 14 runs driven in, 18 hits, basically took the job from Mike Lamb. I thought yeah. he might have played in 163 with the, against the White Sox. He did not, actually. He was kind of out of the lineup by September. He had, he, had, he actually, from June to August, was really productive. I'll, I'll give him that. But then he fell off the table in September and kind of was on the bench by then. But a fun one. A fun random twin. Brian Busher, man. Brian Ooh. Busher. Let's go. Four-month dry spell. Wow. Finally. <laughs> nice comeback. I so, never all right. actually, I got knocked off the road right there. Woo! Judd, you got to you got to find a player for next week. You are going to be leading random twin of the week next Thursday for us. Wow. All right, boys. That's a wrap on the Scorner Twin show here today. Declan's five under the radar players to watch. We will be watching them very closely. On Purple Daily today, it's Thursday. Get excited. Thursday. Everyone.